Hello and welcome to Anderson Community Television. I'm Carol Donahue, your host today of At Your Service. Our guest today is Deputy Matt Rusk from the Hamilton County Sheriff's Department. And today we're going to be talking mainly about the speed signs. Welcome to the program today, Matt. Thank you. Thanks for having me. You're very welcome. Now tell us, what is the purpose of this? Uh, the purpose of the speed signs is to, uh, they're a visual reminder to drivers of the posted speed limit in a certain street or area. Um, they digitally display a vehicle speed at what you're traveling. Uh, and they bring attention to drivers who might be, you know, sp uh, speeding through a particular place or street. Now, I wonder, they don't pick up your license plate number, do they? No, they do not. Oh, phew. okay. Okay, now, if... Uh, if you feel like your neighborhood has a couple of offenders or people are speeding through, what would be the, the route to take to, to get one? Well, we've, we feel numerous complaints, um, sometimes on a daily basis, reference a speeding issue. Um, what we try to do is obviously go out and patrol those streets um, to, you know, uh, monitor traffic. Um, you know, as far as putting the signs out, uh, those are available upon request too. Um, and this is an example of one of our signs right here. Um, so we put those out. Uh, what that sign does, basically, it, like I said, it'll display your speed. Um, it's got a radar built into it. Um, it records your speed, what time you're traveling through the area. Um, so yeah, those are available upon request. And so these things operate 24-7, so they'll operate through the night? Yes, they can operate through the night if we set them to operate through, through the night. And most of the times we will put them only during times of, I guess, peak operation, or I should say peak traffic. Um, uh, kind of senseless to have it on around 3 o'clock in the morning. But we can have them on 24 hours. Now, when you do place one of these in a neighborhood, generally how long do you leave them? Uh, we, can, we can leave them anywhere from... from about an average of two weeks. Now we do have some permanent posts, um, some permanent streets that we have them out on because we see a lot of complaints from certain areas. So some signs have been out on the streets longer than others and we do have permanent locations um, throughout the township. So, but they, the, these new signs which the township um, uh, just purchased are very mobile. So we can actually move the, this type of sign pretty much anywhere. Now, I know some of the neighborhoods have the Neighborhood Watch Program. Yes. So I would imagine sometimes you might be notified by a representative of that or just from a... Absolutely. Yeah, and you work closely with them to, to get the situation. That is correct. Now, if you notice there is a time where it's very heavily, a lot of speeding, do you have a, a police car sitting there? Yes, we do. We try to follow up, um, especially if we tried, you know, extra patrols. We tried sitting monitoring traffic, and then we put the sign out. Um, and basically, like the sign like this one here um, will give us the information we need to see if there's actually a true problem in that area. Um, so it, it gives us information to, for better enforcement, um, you know, as to when, to, if there is a problem. Um, so, you know, it's been very beneficial so far. So you mentioned the township bought these new signs. How do they differ from the old signs? Is there new technology? Yeah, we have two new signs. Uh, these are new technology. These signs are different in the fact that they are very portable. Um, they communicate wirelessly. Um, so basically what that sign can do, it's going to take speeds, it's going to take volumes, um, and it's going to develop speed surveys uh, at which I can access very fast. Um, so it's, it's very uh, unique as far as technology is concerned. Also too, uh, like I said, it, um, these things can take pictures if need be. Um, it has a, a tampering alarm, so if someone messes with the sign, it automatically sends alert to a cell phone, which would alert us immediately if someone were to tamper with it. Um, so, and it's battery life and something like that is a lot better than the older technology that we, we still have, but it's, it's, we're up and coming with the technology. Well, it's amazing. I know so, every once in a while there's one in my neighborhood, and it's a hill. So you're coming yes. down the hill, and you don't realize you're picking up speed. It's the momentum, and you see the sign flashing, and I guess you instantly hit the brake and slow it down. Yep. Now, this one, is it mounted on the brackets like the old ones? It's mounted on the pole. Yeah. Um, we can use an actual speed sign post for it if need be. Um, they're very easily moved. Um, 
and here again, it all depends on the location of where most of the complaints are coming in. Uh, we do have a mobile speed trailer that we also use for, for situations where we might not have a mounting option for that sign. Uh, we can move a speed trailer around upon request as well. And the speed trailer does exactly the same thing that does. Do you sometimes put those where there's construction going on? You know, no, we haven't used them for any type of construction as of yet. Um, you know, we use them upon request. Uh, if we had a concern in an area like that, we could easily put one out. Um, so they're, they're very versatile and, and very mobile units. Well, with Clough, with so much work being done on Clough, I guess you can't build up a speed <laughs> right. to worry about that. Yep. It's sort of stop and go, stop and go. So <laughs> this really helps make your job easier, doesn't it? Yes, it does. And if, if you had to say, is there, is there something positive that's happened through this? Maybe somebody that is a constant offender and you were able to stop them and say, yeah, well, and like, well, like I was telling you, the technology involved, um, it, it, if there was a chronic offender, yes, we could narrow it, probably narrow it down to who that per person would be. Mm -hmm. um, however, we don't necessarily go by just that alone. We go by what the data shows, um, what the speed study shows, uh, what times to be out there. Um, you know, and that gives us a really good ballpark as far as when most speeding offenses occur. So it makes it easier on us to decide, hey, you know, maybe we should put an officer out on this street at a given time for better enforcement. Okay. Now you were telling me that you've you've been a, a with the sheriff's department for what almost I'm going on twenty years. Twenty years. Well yes. thank you so much for all that service. Well, and you've been primarily in Anderson. Yes ma'am. And have you been mostly in this type of work or did you were you in another department? Well I've been in uh, mostly in this kind of work. I've been assigned as a community resource officer for uh, twelve years now. So you work with Corporal Boyman? I sure do. Oh, he's a great guy, too. Yes, he is. He is. Wow, there's, you guys do so much to help us and to keep us safe, and this is another vehicle for that. So if, again, I think I'm going to touch on this before, if, if we feel like in our community this is warranted, we call your office, you come out, you check at various times. If you say, no, we don't think that's warranted, if we say, oh, yes, we do. So is there paperwork that has to be filled out? No, really, we take it uh, per request. Um, you know, if someone basically says, you know, hey, wait, I think we got a speeding problem out here, um, you know, and we've, we're limited to how many signs we have, and we've got, I think it's roughly 120 township streets to patrol out here, and that's, that's, a, that's a combined 31.2 uh, square miles that we're responsible for. Um, but we do the best we can with what we got, and if we have a chronic area like a cut-through street, I'll give you one example, Woodruff Road oh, yeah. is a very heavily used cut through street and you got the school that's not too far away so people like to kind of cut through there mm -hmm. um, but that's where we get a lot of speeding complaints and I'm just giving you an example um, and we'll put a sign out there like there's a matter of fact I'm probably gonna put this sign out there today um, just to bring attention to people and get a good study and see where we're at. So. I know that street that runs through Markley Farms, that's a great cut through to get to the yes. to 275, but I think there's a number of stop signs there also. Yeah, you're, I think you're talking about Woodcroft. Woodcroft, right. Yes. And so the number, of, if, is that another thing you look into if there's quite a bit of speeding there, putting maybe additional stop signs? Um, you know, that's something that we probably could look into. Um, pretty, pretty much where we're at right now, most stop signs are there or what's going to be there. Not to say that okay. we couldn't add one down the road, but that, you know, that takes a, a process to, you know, to erect a stop sign. Um, wow. so. Well, we thank you for coming by today and for, you know, we want to keep our citizens as safe as we can and, and speeding sure has been a killer. And I think especially now the weather is warm, we're all getting out, we've been and we're having cabin fever, and yep. now we're getting out into these nice warmer skies and sunny weather. So we thank you for coming, and we thank all of you for watching Anderson Community Television. This is Carol Donahue saying farewell, and don't speed.